Amen. Amen. We're going to get right into the word of God. Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the day you have made. We ask you, Lord, to give us wisdom, understand of your word, give us guidance, speak to our hearts, minds, bodies, and souls. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 This morning, I'll be coming from the book, the book of Matthew, chapter 13, verse 44. The book of Matthew, chapter 13, verse 44. The book of Matthew, chapter 13, verse 44. The word of God to the people of God. When God speaks a word to us, we can either take hold of it and apply it to our life, or we can take the word that was spoken of our lives and do nothing with it. The Bible says, faith without works is dead. Therefore, if you have faith, you have to put that faith in action in order to uh, do in order for whatever God spoke over your life or in your life to manifest. You have to put action to it. Um, if you want something from God, you can pray about it all day, all day have faith in God, but if, if you put no action to get what you desire from God, it will not come to pass. You have to put action with your faith to make things happen in your life. Um, the Bible says, and I'm going to be um, as transparent as possible as I deliver the word of God on this morning. Um, during this season, I'm going to be teaching uh, on the kingdom of God. God said, speak to my people in reference and speaking on the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. Um, when he spoke to me in my vehicle as I was going home, he said, speak on the kingdom of heaven. And all week long, I've been hearing messages, I've been hearing words, I've been hearing words of encouragement, and everything I've been hearing all week has been, been pertaining to the kingdom of heaven, or the kingdom of God. Uh, they both are used interchangeably, and they're referring to the same thing, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom, which is in heaven. Um, the book of Matthew, chapter 30, 13 and 44, speaks of the parable of the hidden treasure and the pearl. And I'm reminded through this scripture, particular scripture, it says, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hid in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again, and then in his joy went and sold all he had and brought that field. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says that there was a a man there was like a, there's, there's a the heaven is like a kingdom uh, it's like a treasure hidden in a field and a man found it the man found this treasure in the field then he went out and took that treasure once he got it in his hand and rehid it somewhere else and then went out and brought the field he went out and brought the field that he hid something in a lot of times, I want to speak just for a moment for the ones that are gifted, that is hiding their gift and their talents because they're afraid of what people may say or think about them. Uh, you got to be encouraged to do what God has called you to do. This scripture, this particular scripture, we can break down and transform and, and, and teach in different ways and get different perspectives and views of the scripture. Then it goes on to say again in verse 45, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for a fine pearl. A merchant is a seller. They sell things. They make money by selling things. Anytime a person is selling something, they're considered a merchant. Um, and so it says when he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and brought it. This merchant, this particular merchant, unlike the one that hid the treasure, this one went and found and looked for a pearl, found this particular pearl, and seen the value in it. That's the same way God sees us from the kingdom of heaven. He sees us as a valuable pearl. And no matter what, he purchased us with the blood of Jesus, which we say that the blood of Jesus purchased us, amen, that it covered our sins. And so we can look at this scripture too and say that God sent Jesus to cover our sins and we're like that fine pearl that the scripture is talking about. 
And can I get down for a moment and say that uh, when we when this man found this great pearl, he sold everything he had and brought this pearl. That's a thing in life sometimes, saints, that when we find something of, of value, we take joy in it. This man found this pearl. Some of us find our joy in material things. But I'm here to tell somebody, since I'm preaching on the word on, on the kingdom of heaven, the Bible says, store not up your treasures on earth, where the, rock, the moth and the rust may decay it, but yet store your treasures in heaven, where nothing can destroy it. See, these material things shall soon pass away. See, this, this, this particular man, he didn't see the value in, in the things around him. He seen the value in this pearl and decided to go and take everything he had and sell it to, to purchase this particular pearl. This pearl can, can, can be to him something that is greater than what we can see. See, we can't always find the value in things that other people find the value in. Me, myself, I probably wouldn't have purchased a pearl. I would have probably found something that's more, um, that I like more than anything else. Um, and so in this scripture, it reminds me too of, of since this man went out and sold all his possessions to buy this one pearl, it reminds me of someone who did something completely opposite from what this man who found this great pearl did. And that is the rich young ruler. The Bible says, if you could turn your Bibles with me, and I'm going to go there with you, the book of Matthew chapter 19, the book of Matthew chapter 19, and we're going to go to verse 16. We find joy in the things we love the most. The book, the book of Matthew chapter 19, verse 16. Book of Matthew, chapter 19, verse 16. And it says, Just then a man came up to Jesus and asked, Teacher, what good thing must I do to get eternal life? Why do you ask me about what is good? Jesus replied, There is only one who is good. If you want to enter life, keep the commandments. Which ones, he says? He inquired. Jesus replied, you shall not murder, you should not commit adultery, you should not steal, you should not give false testimony, honor your mother and father, and love your neighbor as yourself. Well, see, I have some things to talk about within these scriptures. The Bible says you shall not murder, but right now we have so many people are going out in the communities and doing mass murders. In every city, every state, in, in, uh, in every country, there's someone being murdered daily. And God is saying to us, we have to find a way to stop these murders. So right now, what we, what we have is the government against the NRA, and then we have the government against the people uh, who's trying to fight for gun control, and some are fighting against gun control. See, but we got to understand just because we have guns don't mean that we won't have, just because we get rid of gun and have gun control, it won't get rid of murders. Because people can find other weapons and other things to murder someone with. So what we have to do is just pray to God and ask God for guidance, especially for the government guidance on how to handle these situations. We have to watch and pray, says the Lord. And then it goes on to say, ye shall not commit adultery. I don't think I want to touch that because uh, some folk might get mad. But I'm here to tell somebody who might get mad, listen, you only can be mad at yourself if you're doing something against the Bible, against the word of God, when God says, don't commit adultery. And then it says one that says, do not steal, you shall not give false testimony, and honor your mother, your father and your mother. We have so many problems right now with our youth not honoring their father and their mother. In fact, we have so many adults who don't even honor their father and their mother. And I'm here to tell somebody it's out of order. So when you begin to get out of order of God, your mind begins to be confused about what you really believe. And so when we begin to have a confused mind, we begin to doubt God's word. We begin to doubt what the scripture says. And we begin to doubt ourselves. 
That's why the Bible says, be renewed by, be, be, be not conformed to this world, but be renewed by the renewing of your mind. Our mind has to be renewed, not only, uh, our, our, we got to be renewed in our mind in order to focus on God. And so when we get renewed in our mind, we're bringing down a newness over ourselves. We're bringing a newness over ourselves, and that way we can focus mainly on God and and in servitude. And so it says to this to this ruler, to my point, it says that this this particular ruler, verse um, verse 21 is where I want to go. It says, Jesus said unto this man, this rich young ruler who, who had some wealth, he, he wasn't poor, uh, he had some wealth. And when I say wealth, that means he can go and purchase some things. See, I, I read something before that if you can't purchase the item you're buying twice, then you can't afford to buy that. And so the Bible says that Jesus tells him, now listen to this. Now we read the scripture in the beginning when the merchant found the pearl, went and sold everything he had to buy this one pearl because he's seen great value in it. When you find great value in something, you will do whatever it takes to get it or to make it happen. That's like a, a man going after a, a beautiful female. It don't matter what it takes, he's going after her, no matter if he got to go broke trying to get her. And so that was just an example now. Uh, but Jesus says to him, if thy will be perfect, go and sell all thy have and give to the poor. And thy shall have treasure in heaven. And come and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. See, his possessions covered his eyes, so he could not see the clear clearly what Jesus was offering him. Jesus was saying to him, go home. So everything you have, give everything that you make, every, every money you make, give to the poor. But this young man said, nah, it ain't your kingdom, your heaven is not worth me going to sell everything I have to follow you. Only if he knew that Jesus could offer him something far more than what he owned right now. That's the gift of eternal life. The gift of eternal life is something that we can't totally work for. And eternal life was given to us. It was given to us. And Jesus responds to this man because this man comes and says, listen, listen, what good can I do? And so Jesus says to him, why do you ask me what is good? There is no one good but the Father. If you want to enter into life, keep the commandments of God. The rich young ruler said, I can keep the commandments of God. I won't murder. I will not commit adultery. I won't steal. I won't give false testimony. I'll honor my father and my mother. And I'll love my neighbors as myself. But he says to, if you love your neighbor as yourself, go and sell all your possessions. He said he couldn't do that. It, it ain't worth it. Why? Because he was clouded by the material things in life. How often are we clouded by material things in life and it cloud our judgment? And we can't see the right from wrong because we are clouded by material things. Wealth, money, cars, houses, women, men, Land. These things cloud our judgment. Because we have them, we think we got it going on. But I'm here to tell somebody, because you have all these material things, it don't mean you have it going on. It means you're probably lost. If you don't know Jesus, now you can have all these things and still know Jesus, still follow the commandments of God, still obey the word of God, and still be blessed. So I'm not saying because you have these things that you're not going to um, allow God to be the head of your life. What I'm saying is for those who do not allow God to be the head of their lives, they'll be like the rich young ruler, have all the wealth in the world, but yet go into the kingdom of God. Glory. The Bible goes on to say that it is harder for a rich man to enter, it is harder for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Just like it's hard to put 
a count through the needle of a the, through the thread through, through a needle. Jesus was always using things as parables. When he spoke about the particle son, when he talks about the good Samaritan, these all things are parables. They're not actual events that took place in the Bible, but God gave, but Jesus gave a natural situation to explain a spiritual revelation. And so, two points real quick. To be good or to do good are two different things. To be good means morally ex excellent, virtuous, righteous, and, has, and have poles. Poise. Yeah. But to be good means to profit or advantage or wealth. We shall work for the common good. Is what we often hear politicians say. So to do good is what politicians say. Now we know that most politicians are uh, falsifying their their um, the techniques that they use to uh, get into office and get voted into position. Um, we see it all the time during election time that all these politicians come on commercials and after you, after the election you never see them again. In fact, you may forget who they are. Uh, I'm not, I, one name come to mind, but I don't want to get in trouble for, for, for speaking his name or whatever, but we have a, a particular um, governor and, and even in the states of Georgia right now when they voted to suppress the voting um, options and they tried to suppress the people from voting, but we know who's in control of everything, right? It is God. So therefore, no matter what goes on in our life, we have to be good and to do good. And Paul would include that, therefore, Jesus said, sell all you have and give to the poor. And he could not. The man could not. I'm reminded of the book of Matthew, chapter 25 and 42. When it says, when he told him, take all you have and give to the poor. The man said, listen, I'm not selling nothing I have. I'm not giving my finances to the poor. Listen, if, the, if I had to work for what I have, they can work for what they have. But how many know that even though they could work that mentality of that that situation uh, of saying that people can they can get it because I have it that that, that, that is not um, a good way to look at life because not everyone is afforded the same opportunities you are afforded. Therefore, it's your job, your responsibility to love your neighbor and help your neighbor in areas where they're falling short at. The Bible says that Jesus said, for I was hungry and you didn't feed me. I was thirsty and you did not give me a drink. I was a stranger and you did not invite me in your home. I was naked and you didn't give me clothing. I was sick in prison and you didn't visit me. O ye saints, what shall we say unto these things? What are you doing with what you have worked for? What are you doing with the things that you have in your life? Are they putting blinders over your eyes so you cannot see clearly Jesus? Will you be able, let me ask you this, would you be able to give everything you have to the poor and still be happy? If you knew that eternal life was waiting on you. In conclusion, the ruler chose his wealth over his future with the king of kings. When we find something of great value, like the merchant story of the hidden treasure in the pearl in Matthew 13 and 44, we find joy and desire to keep it for ourselves. Treasure is the quality of precious metals, gems, and other valuable objects. 1 Peter 3, verse 3 says, Your beauty should not come from outward adornment, such as elaborate hairstyles and wearing of gold jewelry or fine clothes. Rather, it should be that of your inner self, the unfolding, unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit. 
If you want to get God's attention, worry about cleaning the inside up before the outside. See, when you begin to clean the inside up, you begin to find that the things you used to be interested in no longer interest you. Because God is working from the inside out. You begin to find the same way you used to talk, you won't talk that way anymore. I heard someone say that I looked at my hands and they were new, looked at my feet and they were too. Because now your eyes have been uncovered from all the sin and perversion that took place in your life. When your mind is clear, you begin to hear God more clearly. You begin to see God more clearly. And you begin to even walk in faith, knowing that God is going to make a way for you and your family. For the Bible says, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. See, I can't see what God is doing in my life right now, but I know a change is taking place. Uh I know somebody who's struggling right now, trying to figure out what to do next. I'm here to tell somebody, just wait on God. God. Don't put the material things before God. Oh, I need my house. I need a new car. I need shoes. I need clothes. All these things shall soon pass away. If you was to pass away and die right now, none of these things can go with you. There's a story I heard some time ago, and it speaks of how this man and this woman accumulated a bunch of wealth. The wife wasn't particularly fond of all the wealth and the material things they had, but the man surely, surely enjoyed everything that life brought his way because money could buy anything and everything that he wanted in his life. He goes to his wife one day, he knows that his time is almost up, and he's preparing now to get his will together, preparing for his transition from earth to heaven or earth to hell, depending on however you take it, or the service, the waiting place, the the, uh, uh, whatever you want to call it, he's going. So he's preparing his will, he writes in his will, and he says, I want everything that I own, my finances, and I want my particular car to be buried with me. He tells his wife, I want my car, want my money buried with me. She said, okay, no problem. And so they write it up in the will. So the time comes and they have the funeral and everything else. And she says, one more thing before he leaves to be buried. He asked me that I would give him all his wealth and this particular car. So before they bury him, they put the car in the ground and then they put the casket in the ground as well. And she says, wait, I gotta give him his money. Now what she does is something we all should do. She goes to a checkbook and sees the amount of money in their account and writes a check for that amount and put it in a casket. Casket. Letting us know this one thing, that nothing we accumulate on earth can go with us. When we transition on to a better place, all the things we work for our whole life and missed our family for, all the things we work for our entire life trying to obtain this one goal will all be gone. See, we can't miss our family chasing behind the mighty dollar. We can't miss our family chasing behind careers because these things are the things that we're going to leave behind that's going to be cherished and live for long, longevity. How could I possibly know that by reading this text that God would speak to all of us? Because this particular word can fit all our lives. Jesus says, when I was thirsty, you did not give me anything to drink. This morning on my way to church, I had a bottle of water with me to drink as I preached the word. And my daughter asked me, says, Dad, can I have something? Well, Daddy, can I have something to drink? So I said, well, take this bottle of water and drink some. So she drinks some, then my other daughter wants some and says, Daddy, she spit in this drink. 
So I'm like, well, did you spit in the drink? And her response is, no, I didn't. So I said, well, give me the water. My daughter said, I want to drink it anyway. And so my thought was, I'm not drinking behind my, I don't drink behind my children at all. Because my children backwash, okay? And so, just like Jesus says, you didn't give me nothing to drink. Be like how I was on this morning. How I reached and gave my drink that I, my only drink I had of water to my children. That's the same thing with God. Although God owns everything, the houses on a hill and the cattle and everything else. But yet, in spite of all the things that God owns and all the people in this world. He really only sees you. We can have a thousand people in one place and God will only see you. Just like God will only see that person. It can be a thousand people in one place, but God will only see you. And when you thirst, God will give you something to drink. Lord. When you are hungry, God will always feed you. And when you are a stranger, there's always somebody to welcome you into their home.